players. Yeah, without a doubt. Class, class act. But so is this man. Breaking the balls. We're still waiting for that Polish player to kind of come through on the matchroom stage, aren't we? I think it is inevitable. It will happen. It's just a matter of when. I think you might have heard Michael McMullen say a little earlier that nine Polish players reached the last 64, and that was the most for any nation, even doing the, the host nation, Germany who had eight players in the last 64. Lechner on the other table is not Mad Max, he's Happy Max, he's just taken a 3-2 lead over Albin Auschen. Best of friends playing over there on table. Table two or the YouTube table, whichever way you want to look at it. Travel around, stay together, practice together a lot out for dinner so big match for them two over there probably bigger for Max in some ways because obviously Albin's won a heap of tournaments Max Lechner still trying to make his name in the world of nine ball you're quite right to talk about Wojciech Shevchik Yes, he's the underdog. Everyone is against Shane Van Boning, with the possible exception of Joshua Fuller. But he's had a good career in his own right. He won the World Ten Ball Championship this year. Last year, he won the European Ten Ball title. And he's been Polish Nine Ball Champion three times since 2018. Now, we've talked about the, the prowess of the Poles collectively. So to win that Nine Ball title, the national title in Poland, three times in quick succession just underlines what a fine player he is yeah that can't have been easy <laughs> and this is just the start Poland would have wanted probably 12 years ago maybe 14 years ago Poland wasn't really that strong of, of a nation Radoslaw Babika was the main man there He's still playing now of course but he was really the only player from over there. Now there's just there's a ton of them. Let's take a, a quick look over on table two. Alvin Auschen, last year's World Nine Ball Champion. Always has a very serious, even concerned expression on his face, regardless of the scoreline, but especially when he's behind. Even this being a race to 10, early days, yes. But he knows what Max Lechner is capable of. There's that cue ball. Oh, he's just about okay. The white caught the point of the center pocket. And thankfully for Shevchik, remained on the table. Yeah, now it's a race to 10. Just feels like a good number, that Phil, to me. Nothing against the number nine, of course, but I don't know. Just seems a a better number to race to. And even though it's just one extra rack, it feels big, and it feels big in the sense of if you're losing and you're having a little bit of a nightmare, so let's just say you were 7-4 down in a race to nine. It's touch and go, isn't it? But just that extra rack, it always feels bigger than just that one rack. Sounds like 10's your lucky number, the way you were eulogizing about it, Carl. My lucky number's 19 and 28, and I'll tell you why. When I went to Vegas for the first time, I was so intimidated playing roulette in those casinos. 
that I was sitting right next to 19 and 28. So rather than lean over, I was just very timidly putting my, my chips on those two numbers and they came up trumps for me. I thought it was because it was the year you were born, Phil. 34 years off, cheeky. SVB has seen this numerous times in his pool career. And this is not something we've seen a lot of this week on centre stage. But it's going to be a two pack. And he's taken those with authority. Wojciech Chevchik, the 27 year old pole. That was very, very good. Actually, the the pole was born on the 1st of September, 1994. So when he got to the final, together with Karol Skaversky of the World Cup of Pool in 2012, he was still a teenager. That's how good he's been for a while now. They lost out to Finland. Mika Eminen and Petri McKinnon. Can't tell you that's Albin Auschen, Drew Level at three racks each, as they all chase that, the European Open Trophy. Plus, of course, invaluable nine ball ranking points as that begins to evolve even more, and the small matter of 30,000 US dollars. You were showing me a queue downstairs, Carl, earlier on, that the gentleman was selling for 35,000 US dollars. Sold it at 35,000 euros, Phil. Wow. Yeah, it's quite an incredible queue. I'm going to do a little video on that queue and release it on the YouTube channel this week, Phil. I think if I bought a, a queue for 35,000 euro, I wouldn't be able to pot a ball because I'd have so many tears in my eyes. I couldn't see where I was going. <laughs> I'm sure you've got a few 35,000 euro cues stashed at home, Phil. I have got a 35,000 euro car, let alone a queue. Needs this two ball to slow up. Shane will be hoping it goes on the rail, and it does. And I think where it's landed, he doesn't even have a, a bank shot on, so it's going to be a safety. Just banking it above the side. He knows it doesn't pot because of them two balls blocking it. And he's done well there. Very well indeed. And so the great man comes to the table. looks awkward as well because he can only see the right hand side of the two seven ball looks like it's in a path where the cue ball is tracking it's a good containing shot though it really is nothing much you could do there just keep distance try and keep the two in the center of the table but there's a nice opportunity here of a good safety again here. No, 
that's what he's played. Sending the cue ball over there. He's got a few balls. Shane's just got to try and find a good hit here because he knows that three ball is awkward to get position on. This looks awkward. Is there a natural path to hit this blue two? Eight ball looks like it's in the way of a two railer. What I've always thought with Wojciech Shevchik, he's always had a lot of poise at the table. He doesn't seem one of those kind of guys who would be intimidated by reputation. And of course, the glowing reputation, the towering reputation of Van Boning is second to none. He's going two rails. He's got to hit near the centre pocket. He's just got to miss this eight ball. Watch the cue ball. It's going to go close to the eight. Ah, nicely done. Just biding himself a bit of time. There's an angle, though, for Wojciech. He can pot it in the top right and disturb them two balls until the top left. This is a chance. We started with 256 players, the usual suspects. have made their way through to the final 32. That's the stage we are at now. It's a race to 10. And this is the big match. You want to make it through to the last 16 tomorrow because that's when the TV cameras come live on Sky Sports and The Zone. He's tried to find the gap. He's overrun it. He's going to be kicking at this one. I don't blame him for looking for that gap, but he did have a nice angle to run into the two balls. Still my favourite shot of the entire week was the, the positional shot on the two that Joshua Filler played against Raphael Vahl. Hill Hill, the deciding rack, potted the two with the cue ball on the rail, found a gap between two balls that could have caused problems, landed perfectly on a pretty much unmissable 3-9 combination. Yeah, nicely done, the three ball. Hit a rail after contact, so it's a legal shot. Let's not forget, after contact, a ball must hit a rail unless you pocket a ball. That is the rules of nine ball. Albin Auschen hits the front against Max Lechner at 4-3. The key to the seventh rack, he potted a three ball from distance, loading up with maximum right-hand side for shape. And he dropped perfectly on the next ball and away he went. Things just not quite happening for the world champ at the moment. Still early days, but these matches can soon get away from you. First mistake 
could that be significant? Van Boning bounding out of his chair. Yeah, how costly is that going to be, Phil? It was a good chance. It wasn't a difficult pot. Shane ideally wants to keep this pink four over the pocket after potting the green six. See how he played that a little firmer because he, he knew if he hits the six full, the four may follow through. But if he, if he hits the six just off full the way he did, it's still going to bounce off that bottom rail. So looked an easy shot, but it's knowledge that. A little hampered the queuing, but the, the pot and the positional aspect shouldn't be overly difficult. Always feel with certain players, it's a privilege to commentate on them. And that's most certainly the, the case with Shane Van Boning. Can't wait to get to Atlantic City and see if he can go for that unprecedented US Open title. First things first, though, he wants to win the European Open. And that was a vital rack for him after Sitting out the first two, he gets on the board. Wojciech Shevchik leads 2-1. Scrawls from around the arena. Well, in the race to be the first player into the last 16, ahead at the moment is Mario He. He's 9-3 up on Roman Hebler from the Czech Republic. Also nearly there, Jose Alberto Delgado, 8-5 up on Mark Bajdebosch. And Sanyan Perlovanovic, a guest of ours in the Comedy Box on several occasions he's 8-3 up on Nikos Economopoulos other scores Jonas Suto Camino 5-3 up on Michael Schneider Mohamed Sufi and Mateusz Snigotsky 5-5 and Thomas Kaplan has pulled away he's now 6-3 up on Sullivan Clark yeah, Jason Shaw is waiting to play Daniel Correri from Italy. That match is up next on our feature table. He needs the seven ball to get out of the way and it's just not quite happening for SVB on the break. Trying to pot the one ball and he's missed it again. He's struggling with the break. He's one of the great students of breaking, isn't he? Shane Van Boning. You often see him in the audience working things out, trying to maximise the edge. I think when he gets this one sorted out, watch out because in terms of all-round play, he's sensational. He's got the, the tactical nous, the potting, the, the positional play. When he gets his break sorted out under these, these new break rules, I think he will become even more formidable than he already is. The good thing is, though, for we, you know, we are seeing far more pool, aren't we? We're not just seeing break and run, break and run. We're seeing all aspects of the game, and these are the aspects us pool players know. You know, for the average fan, they might, you know, they might, they might just think it's break and clear the table every rack, but this is not what. What those pool players think pool is about. This is what pool's about. The world champ coming with a kick hook there from nowhere. The vision he showed there. Splendid shot. Look at this one. Just caressing the green six. Parity again over on table two. Max Lechner back on level terms. 
against Albin Auschen at 4-4. Mario He is the first player into the, the last 16. He's comprehensively beaten Roman Hebler. 10-3, Mario He. For me, very underrated. He's got a lovely cue action. Yeah, I'm glad to see Mario going deep here. He had that unfortunate event where he qualified for the Moscone Cup and couldn't play. I mean, how tough must that have been to deal with? So good to see me and make the last 16. And with you, Phil, very good cueist. And he plays the game like he doesn't care, and that is dangerous. I don't know what he cares about right now, getting back into that Austrian team at the World Cup. Trying to go behind it. Well, I believe he was trying to go behind it. No, maybe he wasn't. Second glance, maybe he was trying to hit that a little thinner and send it over to the red and the nine ball. So the kick save from SVB has paid off. This is a good chance. Yes, and because his break-off was so productive in terms of knocking in balls, he's not got an awful lot to do. Americans left. SVB, of course, who are watching now. Oscar Dominguez, who was involved in a classic match. Big match as well. Oscar and Tyler Steyer vowing for spots for Team USA. The captain's here, JJ. I'm sure all this is getting noted down on a little notebook. SVB is about to tie the match up. There it is, 2-2. Two, two. Now this one is reminiscent of the old boxing adage when two unbeaten fighters go against each other, the O must go. They both arrived at this stage with four wins out of four. Van Boning had a 9-1 win to start off against Martin Breuer. Then he whitewashed RF Awadi 9-0. It was tougher in his next couple of matches. He was... Struggling at one point against Yanni Uski, came through 9-7, then beat Sebastian Starb on an outside table earlier today, 9-5. Talking about struggling, both of the players on table two are struggling to shake off the other. Tricky jump shot. He's got to raise the back arm quite high. There you see. See how high he's striking down. That's because he's got to get this cue ball popping quick. And he'll be happy with that. Back to SVB. Can he find the one in the center? He can't. Another break. And another where the one ball doesn't go in the side pocket this time. Well, he'll be happy it hasn't look. Goes close, though. You could see it hit both jaws. And now he's going to pop that ball in that side pocket. And he should be good to get on the two. So good table split. Yeah, the five saved his bacon there.
This is what he does best. It's very rare SVB doesn't clear the table when they're all in the open. He's just landed on the opposite side of the right angle, but he's actually okay. He can just roll it through half the distance and he doesn't have to get great on the nine ball. Well, he's decided to opt for the other way, so that's fine. Just having another look there. He wants to make sure he plays this and he doesn't go near that right centre pocket. So we'll have a juice up with right English. Yeah, there you see. So we got a bit closer to the nine. That was because he wanted to take away the scratch. And he takes the lead. Yes, from 2 0 down, Shane Van Burning hits the front at 3 2. What a year it's been for Shane Van Boning. He's not won a multitude of titles, just the one actually, but it was the big one, the World Nine Ball Championship at Milton Keynes in early April. As for recently, well, he's been knocking on the door. Bucharest, third, UK Open, losing semi-finalist, losing semi-finalist as well at the World Cup of Pool. And then recently, in a really well-named tournament, the racks on the rocks open in nine ball and ten ball, third again. Never thought about that one, did we, when we were in Gibraltar? We could have called it the racks on the rock. That one that was one that slipped by, really. It's not like you, Phil. I know. Must have a stern word with myself. SVB has made the one in the side. Breaking news. That's what he's playing for. You've got to squeeze this yellow one ball into the centre pocket. We know by now the cue ball is not guaranteed. This is what we want. Can't control the cue ball. And now you've got to play a few shots every rack. You don't even realise what you just said there, do you? Breaking news, literally news about a break. Disbelief, I mean disbelief. He's gonna put the four ball now. He's gonna play a little carom. Using the three ball. He's gonna hit the three first. Then the cue ball's going to run into the pink four. He's got to set the three up, though, for his next shot. Just like so. I don't think he can get the cue ball out, though, to play the purple in the same pocket. Maybe he's going to have to just cheat the pocket a little bit and run the cue ball through and then play the purple five in that bottom right corner pocket. Oh, is he, is he juicing the cue ball up? Well, this is an exhibition shot if he plays it. Gotta be careful, the scratch is on. I think where the six ball is, I'd be tempted just to roll the cue ball through. Is he stunning it hard or is he going to draw it right back? I hope he draws it back. It's a beautiful sight to see this shot. He's lying on a good flick. Oh, it's a beauty. It is a beauty. What a shot from the world champ.
It really is the, the perfect combination, Van Boding. Desire, determination, nerve, dedication, abundant skill, and immense knowledge. Yeah, he just knows all the shots, doesn't he? Yesterday we talked about his cue ball and that shot he played from the pink four to bump the five. That just proved what he's about as he takes a 4-2 lead. He's from Sioux Falls in the great state of South Dakota. And one of the cities that Sioux Falls is twinned with is right here in Germany, Potsdam. Now, this is the order of play on table one. Van Bonen going nicely now after losing the first two racks and not getting a shot. Earlier on, Oscar Dominguez was a 9-6 winner in the All-American clash between himself and Tyler Steyer. Alex Gazakis, Peter, a lacklustre David Alcady. Something didn't seem right there to me about him. He didn't seem to have the usual fight this week. Kazakis coming through 9-2. And... In our first match, which was the best match, not just of the day, but of the, the week so far, Joshua Filler, in dramatic, thrilling circumstances, defeating Eklund Kachi 9-8 from 8-7 down. Another break explosion from Shane Van Boning. The one in the side but the two not playing ball. If there is a pot on, it is a very tricky one. But if this goes in, it could be a break and run out in no time. If he can't pot it, he may go cross bank. If that is the case, the cue ball is going to spin forward off two rails. Looks close that he can pot this in the side for me, though. I think he might have a gap. Oh, he did have a gap and he's missed it. That is unlike Shane. That is a big chance gone. What is he left, Wojciech? Yes, he overcut the two ball, so the gap was ample. Max Lechner back in front against Alban Auschen on table two, 5-4 now. Had to play safe, and it was a good safety at that. This is always tricky, this, when you're kicking one rail because he's kicking up into the blue two and it, it's very difficult for Shane to get this safe. We're always trying to look for a few balls, so maybe he's trying to pot it in the right centre. He knows if he goes high or low, it might land on the top rail. Well, he's completely just took a chance here. Oh, wow. He is going to be absolutely delighted with the outcome of that. Do you remember in the last rack as he was running out I was listing the attributes he's got well if you factor in a little bit of good fortune that equation equals unbeatable well they have a saying don't they in sport the more you practice the luckier you get and we know Shane's one of the hardest working players on tour Rail first, try and pot it along the rail. Don't be 
be silly, Carl. What are you talking about? Great kick safe. But if there's a, a path to the two, he could be soon back in trouble, Chef Chick. Really good racks, these, aren't they? There are six balls on the table. Shane had a shot in the side pocket, and since then it's been some good safeties. Good kick there from Wojciech. A little bit of luck from Shane, and it just seems to build up the rack even more. It becomes even more important who wins this one. Well, there is no path, not even a, a path to the one cushion escape. Has he left the two three combination? Yes, that can definitely be made. If you're not watching out of the feature table on the YouTube channel, that's Max from Poole. Max Lechner is playing his good buddy and his road partner, Albin Ocean. He's leading 5 4 and he's at the table with a good chance. Needs to control the blue two and the cue ball here. He's a big favourite to pot the three. It's all about where the other two balls end up. do nicely Perfectly timed, the, the split screen. I can tell you, Max Lechner, we've just seen him knocking a, an easy ball to the middle pocket. Before that, he showed his ambidextrous skills by potting a, a thin cut left-handed. While he fully respects Albin Aushin's game, and who wouldn't, there are no mysteries there for him. He knows his opponent's game inside out. In his mind, Max will have said to himself, yes, it's a tough task, but I can win. I'm capable of doing so. Yeah, Max Lechner got to the final of the US Open a few years ago where I think it was Jason Shaw might have actually been the US International. It was that event anyway in Virginia. And he got to the final and it was this very break rule. He likes this break rule, does Max. Very useful snippet of information that call. I will definitely tuck that one away as we see Lechner go 6-4 up. As for Chefchik, after losing four consecutive racks, he stops the mini rot. It's now 4-3. So let me give you some scores from around this arena. Sanyan Perlovanovic on the hill against Nikos Economopoulos, 9-4. Janus Suto Camino, 6-4 up on Michael Schneider. Matthias Snigotsky, 7-6 up on Mohamed Sufi. Look at Sullivan Clark from New Zealand, the teenager fighting back against Thomas Kaplan. It was. 6-3 to Kaplan, now 
the poles lead is only 7-6. Bessar Spahiu and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz are just about to begin over on table 17. You know, I was mentioning before, Carl, that Shane Van Boning is from Sioux Falls. Two very famous people from there. One, if you're watching in the United States, you'll know immediately. Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight. And certainly for folks on this side of the Atlantic, David Soul, the actor in Starsky and Hutch. You're looking blank. You're not that young. Where do you pull this stuff from? That's what I want to know. Where, where do you dig this up? Is it even true? Yes, it's true. That's the trophy. It's true that that's going to be awarded to someone here on Sunday night. And the man who's sitting there in his chair, Shane Van Boning, is one of the favourites to be lifting it. Didn't hit them how he would have liked. Oh, he's been fortunate. A random ball, the last ball rolling. Yeah, the cue ball was a little low, wasn't it? And just look at the eight ball, comes round and finds a pocket. Latest from table two, Lechner's in again with a, a glorious chance for 7-4. It's not been, by his standards, a banner year for Albin Auschen. I say by his standards, which are so, so high. He won the, the Premier League pool, of course, at Milton Keynes back in February. But a loss here, especially against his pal, that would sting. That was a nice little safety. Getting the cue ball jammed up on that nine. That takes away side rails whenever you do that. This for a shot he's attempting. He's got to play with a bit of left. No, he had to play with a bit of left. And he just caught the four ball. It actually could have come out a little bit worse now. I think Wojciech's got to come with something here. Just the way these two balls have finished on the bottom rail. Yeah, it's not a dead set combo, this. So if he's going to pot the seven... Well, he's got to play a carom, that's why he's putting the cue ball there. Just glance off the one first to pop the brown seven. So he's not out of the wood just yet, is he? Shane, a little bit fortunate to leave this little bit of a mess. Max Lechner, seven, four up now over the former world champ. And while Shevchik thinks about what to do, I can tell you we have another result. Jose Alberto Delgado from Spain has doubled up on Mark Bosch de Bosch. He's beaten the Dutchman 10-5. Getting to the last 16 of that this tournament for someone like Delgado, that's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, I'm very happy for Jose. He's a good win. He's having a good week. And his fellow Spaniard, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He's just started his match. He's 1 0 over Basar Spahu from Albania. It's causing him some problems the way these two balls have ended up. I believe he's playing safe. That's how awkward these two are. So when Shane fouled, I bet he thought. 
This rack was over, but he's going to get back out the chair. He's the one to slow down. This is no good. This is no good. There's a gap there. I'm not saying Shane's got an easy shot, but there is a gap. What a turn of events we've had here in this rack. We still don't know how this rack's going to finish, but when Shane fouled, I thought this rack was over, and I'm sure he did. But there's still a bit of life left. I think everyone who knows Nine Ball Pool knows there's more than a bit of life left on table two. Albin Aushin trying to initiate a comeback. And you would think if he gets good position from three to four, then everything would be sitting quite pretty. On table one in this tactical exchange, no quarter is being given. Well, it was quite a tussle, and the first to blink is Van Boning. He's made a real hash of that. Look at the table now. It's connecting the dots. Yeah, this is a kind table layout now, so Wojciech is going to get his chance. It's going to go wrong. It will go wrong now on this shot. He's got to get back out for this five. If he's a bit of angle, oh yeah, he may even run through. I do apologise. Two rails, five in the side or the top left. Yeah, that's what he's played. It's going to be the top left. Players will always shoot into the big corner pockets on a pool table. He can play this in the left centre, but I'd be very surprised. Such a big pocket up there in the corner. A smattering of applause you might have heard. That's because 
Albin Ocean has pulled Iraq back 7 5 to Lechner on table two. Alex Kazakis, we've seen him beat David Alcady before. He's waiting to play. He's playing John Morrow. What a story John Morrow is. Professional pool player for a long time. He used to play right-handed. Then he had a, a little injury in his arm, and it was awkward to play. So he trained himself to play left-handed, and now he's a full-time pro. Left-handed, and he's in the last 32. Phil, what about that? Incredible. Here, on one hand, you could say Shane Van Boning is playing nicely. On the other hand, you could say Wojciech Shevchik is proving very stubborn. I think we're going to see another really cracking match here. Now, this is the, the order of play on table two so far. Albin Auschen started out in the last 64 with a, a very decisive 9-1 win over Bada Alawadi. Then Khalid Al-Gamdi from... Saudi Arabia held himself together really well to beat Oliver Sholnocki 9-7. Saw him afterwards, he said, I was lucky. He was more than lucky. Mieska Fatunski overcame Loho Sum, runner-up in the World Masters, of course, from Hong Kong, 9-3. And now Lechner and Aushin are doing battle. I can tell you the, the next match over on table two will be Joshua Filler against Oscar Dominguez. Other scores, Sanyan Perlovanovic 9-7 now against Nikos Economopoulos. 8-4, Jonas Suto Camino over Michael Schneider. Matthias Snigotsky, 8-7 over Mohamed Safi, or Sufi, I should say. Thomas Kaplan, 8-7 over Sullivan Clark. FSR, one of the winning machines of 2022, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 2-0 upon Bessar Spahiu. And that is all of the latest. A number of matches, of course, in the, the last 32 yet to begin. To be precise, six of them. And one of those is the next match here on table one at the conclusion of this. Daniel Corrieri against Jason Shaw. We talk about rivalries in sports. One of the great rivalries in pool is... Jason Shaw against Shane Van Boning, particularly in the Moscone Cup. That's one to behold, isn't it? Yeah, I think you can also add Joshua Filler into that little rivalry with Shane. It's always a good spectacle when you get to see them match up. Nikos Economopoulos has pulled another rack back. He was well behind against Sanjin Filovanovic. It's now 9-7 in favour of Sanjin. Yeah, also on the hill now, Matthias Snigotsky, 9-7 up on Mohamed Sufi. And Francisco Sanchez-Ruiz continues to go about his merry way. 3-0 up on Spahihu. Albin's in trouble here. He's hooked on the two. He can go off the left rail, but how do you get that safe? Plus there's a possible scratch. We'll keep you posted. Yeah, this is what happened on his last break and the last ball rolled in. So Wojciech's not quite got the break dialed down in this match yet. And he's getting a little bit fortunate not to leave anything easier for Shane. But if there's nine balls on the table, there's more traffic. So these things can happen. And if you're not breaking as well as your opponent, it is sometimes an insurmountable handicap in nine ball pool. A classic example of that was this tournament. Tony Drago, in every aspect, apart from breaking off, looked good. But in the end, it was just too much of a hurdle to clear. Yeah, and unlike previous events where every single person in the event can break, 
There's a different skill to this now. And there is a skill to it. This isn't just whack and hope. There's a real skill involved in breaking these balls and trying to pot that one in the side now. Where does he push to? This is tricky for Shane. This is very tricky indeed. Sometimes players like to tie another ball up, make a bit of a cluster, but you can't do that in this rack. All the balls are too widely spread. If you've just tuned in for the very first time, after the break, the incoming player can roll the cue ball wherever he wants. You can even hit another ball. You can pot a ball. And then your opponent comes to the table with the option of playing the shot or passing it back. So is it just going to roll the cue ball behind the purple five? Because Wojciech would say, carry on, buddy. Good luck. And this is why Shane is taking such a long time, because where do you roll the cue ball? One big difference, of course, tomorrow, you will see the introduction of the 30-second shot clock. Yeah, this may work. Is he looking at just tapping the cue ball a little bit there? Leaving a one-rail kick, skimming off it thin? This is me just thinking out loud. You can see he's even throwing his hands up in the air. Where do I roll to here, he's saying. could just tap the cue ball where it is in, in that little area and then he could skim just before the middle one rail bump it to the right hand side rail and try and get the cue ball over towards the green six he's in such a bad spot here yeah the other thing he's thinking is if he rolls into the five moves the five a little closer to the one he leaves the same shot I was just explaining if he's befuddled, anyone would be befuddled. Yeah, so it's the same shot as what I was suggesting. He's leaving this little one railer before the right centre pocket. Now, Wojciech, do you play it or pass it back? Do you back yourself to play a good kick? If you don't fancy it, you've got to hand it back. You can even pot the one in the top right corner as well off this one rail this is Wojciech just having a look you see how he's coming over here to the left side of the table he knows the cue ball can squirt over there so he's weighing up all the options gives it back to the world nine ball champ Shane what have you got show the fans is he trying to pot it in the corner or is he playing safe Try to hit it full and get it over towards the two. He's done a good job there. He's got to be happy with that. That was quite tricky because if you hit the right hand side of the one thinner, you could scratch in the top corner. Two aspects to Q Sports execution and thought process. And in terms of thought process, there. Shane Van Burning was so meticulous. That was a, a sticky situation. Yeah, Wojciech could have played that shot. He just felt like it wasn't for him, which is okay. It's 
can't overstate the importance of this match to Shevchik. I'm just looking at the live nine ball rankings and he is 22nd as it stands right now. If he were to win this match, he would move inside the top 20. And of course, with potentially much bigger riches to come. He's trying to pop the one rail first. He's over, spun it. Ball in hand. SVB was 4 2 up. He was also 2 0 down, so this match is going back and forth. Yeah, just talking about those live nine ball rankings that Matchroom have so expertly put together. What about this? Don't think they're a, a good indicator? Well, they are, and I'll tell you why. Because the entire top six remain in this tournament. In descending order, Shane Van Boning, Joshua Fuller, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, Albin Auschen, Alexander Kazakis, and Mario He. The highest ranked player to depart so far, Oliver Sholnocki, number seven. But it's highly doubtful he'll remain number seven. On table two, Albin Auschen. The 13th rack was quite a lengthy one. He took it, basically had ball in hand, when playing safe, Max Lechner suffered a double kiss and scratched. Sanyan Perlovanovic, rising star from Bosnia, has beaten Nikos Economopoulos 10-7. So, Perlovanovic awaits the winner of this. And Sullivan Clark back on level terms with Thomas Kaplan. Eight racks each. He's one of those players, Carl, who doesn't get flustered. Seems like that with all the Polish players, though, doesn't it, Phil? They all seem to have good, good mindset now, good temperament. That is always going to stand you in good stead. Yes, and there's a real team spirit as well. When you look around the arena at matches, you often see a, a Polish player who comes off a, a table with a victory and his fellow countrymen are there to, to bump fists or shake hands and say, well done. It's a tough collective, which is getting tougher and tougher by the year. And there's no doubt Wojciech Shevchik is a tough cookie, as he's just shown there. Having led 2-0, then fallen 4-2 behind, Shevchik is back in front. Can't tell you, Bissar Spahiu from Albania has won a rack against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. It's now 3-1 to the Spaniard. And Radoslav Babica and Mieszka Fatunski in the all-Polish match 
over on table 22. They are two racks each. Giannis Suter Camino and Matthias Snigocki, both still on the hill. Snigotsky, 9 8 up on Mohamed Sufi. Giannis Suter Camino, 9 5 up on Michael Schneider. Well, this is going to work out nicely, Phil. He's got a shot on the two ball. Makes such a big difference, doesn't it, when you hit him a lot squarer and you do get rid of that one ball. Just seems to give you a better chance. Look at the balls here. Just pop this ball in the side. You're guaranteed to be on the three. Purple fives over the right centre. These are begging, absolute begging to be potted. This is what we call in the States a road map. Well, with the advent of sat nav roadmaps are becoming obsolete and with the advent of these new brake changes they're not obsolete roadmaps but they're very rare aren't they yeah it certainly seems that way from what we've seen obviously we're only really concentrating on the feature table but in between our work we have a little nosy round and get a feel of what's going on The Poles are prospering, I can tell you. Matthias Snigotsky is the latest player through to the last 16 tomorrow. He's beaten Mohamed Sufi 10 8. Could make a case for the cue ball landing a little short of where he wanted fair enough pot it go to rail it's not the end of the world just trying to pick something out seeing if something can go wrong and it can go wrong he's under it the position to get on the eight and it has caused the miss we're always looking aren't we we're always trying to decipher what will be the turning point, the pivotal moment in a match. It might not be, but at the end of this, we could be looking back on that shot and saying, that's where it all changed. Yeah, if the cue ball come further over the table, the eight ball was unmissable. And whenever you're playing into a blind pocket, you're going to miss them now and again. Can Shane get on the nine ball clean? Can he get on it good? He can, of course he can. So from facing... What looked like he was trailing 4-6. This nine ball to tie it up. How many nine balls has Shane Van Boning knocked in in his life? Far too many to ever know the answer to. But I'll tell you what, that was important. He's now back on level terms and... Wojciech Shevchik is no doubt regretting the fact he's not 6-4 ahead. Let's just pop in on table two for a moment. In between racks on the main table. Max Lechner in play. Four pots away from an 8-6 lead. Oh, now then, another potential turning point. Overcutted by some distance, did Max? Is the pressure 
get into some of these players who are a little inexperienced. Albin's won it all. SVB has won it all. Oh, and look at that random ball. From Shevchik's perspective, it was a rogue ball. Look at the the one just coaxing in the ball that's enabled Shane Van Boning to have this open table and the opportunity to go back in front. Looking at the table here, you have to believe if position is obtained from two to three, that will be the key that unlocks the rack. Has he got awkward queuing or is he just okay? Well, the overhead cameras seem to suggest he was okay, but you look at that, maybe not. Yeah, it's just travelled marginally far enough. Always seems to be the case when you miss an easy eight ball like that or a real easy ball. The very next rack, your opponent seems to break and run. It's like double the punishment. It doesn't just cost you one rack, it seems to cost you two and... How many will it cost? Wojciech, Shevchuk. When he gets a chance, Van Boning, and he's in the zone. He's so dependable. great shot to tell you about in just a, a moment first let's see if SVB deposits the nine of course he does briefly Van Boning went behind now though he's in the ascendancy albeit by a single rack at 6-5 yeah the great shot to tell you about was over on table two Albin Auschen and Max Lechner They are on the nine ball now in rack 14. Aushin has the nine to draw level at 7-7. Seven, seven. But the cue ball is very tight to the side rail, as you can see. This is a pressurised ball. And one that even a world champion could miss. But he doesn't miss. And the the moments in that rack that made all the difference, he actually banked the seven ball length of the table. He laid a really good hook on the seven. Lechner hit the snooker. Then Albin banked the seven length of the table into the rest. So it's seven seven over there.
4-1. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz over Bessar Spahiu. That's on table 17. Mieszka Fatunski, 4-2 up on Radislav Babica. And both Thomas Kaplan and Giannis Suter Camino remain on the hill. Another break, and it's another break where he's not potted the one. And he's in a spot of bother. Look at this for a shot. Full length cue jump draw. I think that's what he's looking at. Because that is actually his break cue he's got in his hand. And the reason he's using his break cue is because the tip is a little harder. So that makes the cue ball pop off the rail easier. But he's going for this. There you see, that's his break cue. Oh, SVB with a beauty! <laughs> Worth the price of admission. What a man. might have heard a big whoop of joy from out in the sticks. Well, that was table 23 where Thomas Kaplan has defeated Sullivan Clark 10-8. So the, the teenager from New Zealand has been eliminated, but what a learning curve he's been on. Yeah, he should be very proud of his performance here. New to the scene. And he's had some big wins. Congratulations, Sullivan Clark. Shane's tricky one here. They see he's just looking at the angle that he's taking. The nine ball is a big ball. Can he squeeze past that? Can he squeeze past the nine? Wants this to hold up. Good shot indeed. Cue ball just bump into the four, will he? Yes, he will. That's okay. There's a gap for the five, so he decided to go for it. The shot on the one ball, the push out, he didn't feel like it was there, so what a shot to take on. That's paved the way for this chance. Absolutely, I love watching him play. Filler is exhilarating. Shane Van Boning, he gets the grey matter going, doesn't he? You try and think with him, of course you'll never top his thought process. He was facing a 
deficit of two racks. And now Wojciech Shevchik is facing a deficit of two racks. Brilliant stuff from Van Boning. But there's no way he will ever fall victim to complacency against an opponent of Shevchik's class. Now, talking about class and also about grit, Albin Auschen, he's back on level terms with Max Lechner. And he's won a tactical duel in rack 15 to afford himself this opening. While we're just watching a snippet of the action here, I can tell you that Mieszka Fatunski 5-2 up on Radislav Babica. Moritz Neuhausen 1-0 up on Switzerland's Ronald Regley. We'll give you the latest score on table two when that score changes. Now, though, back to SVB, who seems rather frustrated. Yeah, I mean... He's not getting it all his own way anymore, is he, on the break? But at least he made the one ball then. The rest of it is out of his hands, so to speak. Going to be pushing this time now, but same again. Why did he push to? As Van Boning pushes out, the man who preceded him as world champion, Albin Auschen, pushes on. He's taken the lead against Max Lechner from a worrying position at one point. Auschen, 8-7 up. That signals where he wants to cue ball in order to pop the red three. Grabo, Dennis Graves off to a flyer against Niels Fire and he leads 3 0. Yeah, you call him Grave, I call him Grabber. Now, the worrying thing about that is one of us is right and one of us is incorrect, and I'm just praying it, it isn't me because you'll never let me live it down. He's put Shane back in. What has Shane spotted? Oh, Shane went for the pot there. I'm sure he did. Well, he does have some form of consolation with that shot. Clearly, two to three would be extremely difficult, extremely complex. And also, the, the position of the four, not ideal either.
needs to flick the eight, but not like that. That is unfortunate. Look at this great pot. Thinks he's going to be okay. And he's hooked. Chef chick in the most annoying fashion. Out of position. Very much in the balls. Going nicely. Albin Aushin on table two. Zoning in on 9-7 and being on the hill. tell you, Albin Aushin made an absolute hash of his positional shot onto the six ball and he caught the six and he's left it down the side rail past the seven. So fortunate. It wasn't a fluke, but really it was. Talking of flukes, SVB just had one of his own. Boy, Jack can't really grumble, can he? Because when he missed that eight ball to go 6-4 up, he just threw the initiative back over to the other side. When you receive a golden rub, you have to take advantage of it. That's what Albin Aushin has done there. With no pangs of guilt whatsoever, he leads Max Lechner 9-7. He's trying to go through the gap. He's got a plate with right spin. And he's got to make sure he hits a rail after contact. And he did it a rail after contact. Mm, can Shane pop the three past the nine? Does it go? I'm pretty sure it does call. Had to play the carrot. You always have to hit the lowest ball on the table. If you do that and you pocket another ball, you stay at the table. That's what's happened just there. And you can even win an early game if you pot the nine early, as long as you hit the lowest ball first. Top pros don't really chase the nine. You, you're more likely to see... Phil Yates chased the nine, whacking at the nine for an easy win. Unless it's a guaranteed combo, the players would rather run the table. A little bit straight there, though, was Shane. Got to get this cue ball moving, get it out of the way. And sometimes you do scratch on this shot. 
So what can Shane do? Is he drawing? Gonna draw it out off two rails, is he? There's a good look. Oh, he's played that well. He doesn't want to be bridging over the nine. I think he's just got a gap. Oh, he's going to have to get the referee here. Just got to be a little bit careful. Where the, the cue ball is, though, Carl, that means he's going to put right-hand side on the white. Yeah, there's a fly just near the seven. There you can see Marcel. Shane's called pest control. Here comes Marcel. Exterminate. You can sense it's getting late in the day. I think he'll just pop the seven here and leave the cue ball there. That's going to leave a tough eight. Big shot coming up. He made that shot look a lot simpler than it was. Couldn't see the middle of the, the cue ball. And so to knock that in so cleanly. Evidence that he's he's getting into his stroke here. But this eight ball, even for SVB, is no certainty. Nailed it. Yeah, and it went in clean as well, didn't it? Sometimes they... They rattle and fall, but it went in clean. Big shot, big rack. Yes, because for the first time in the match, there is a three rack gap. It was 2-0 to Shevchik. Then it went 4-2 Van Boning. And now he's three in front at 8-5. Two more racks required for victory. Oh! Now, that might be Jonas Suto Camino against Michael Schneider. He was 9-8 ahead on the hill. That could be the, the victory whoop from the Spaniard. Ronald Redley, 2-1 up on Moritz Neuhausen. Mieszka Fatunski, 6-2 up on Radislav Babica in the all-Polish battle. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 5-1 up now on Bessar Spahiu. Khalid. Al Gamdi from Saudi Arabia. The 17 year old has taken the first rack from Conrad Yajushin. And Dennis Grabber, 4 1 up on Neil Svayan. As we see, <laughs> SVB decimate those balls. Yeah, and he's not had much run on the break, but this has certainly made up for it. Look at the split he has got here to get himself on the hill. Wojciech Shevchek had two balls left to go 6-4 up. It was easy. He made the mistake and the match has changed. Absolutely right. He made two mistakes, didn't he? The position onto the eight wasn't the best. And then the missed part on the eight. Leave any gap in your armour. demonstrate any kind of weakness and SVB will be in the in this survival of the pool fittest all he's going to need is an angle on the seven and this rack should be done and dusted What I love about Shane Van Boning, it's just the nuance, the the application of side to give himself the best possible position, not just good position, the best possible.
Also, when he gets down, he's not hoping a shot will work out well. He fully expected to. And of course, we expected Shane to clear the table there with a break and run. What a time for a break and run as well. The reigning world nine ball champion looks all the world as though he's going to win this match now. He is four up with a possible five to play at 9-5. Albin Ocean, you can just see him there on the bottom right of your screen. Well, now he's on full screen. This is the table layout to take him into the last 16. It's been a very nervy match, very good friends. It's never easy playing a close friend. Can he hold the cue ball and get on this five? Yes, he can. He goes three rails. Albin's usually pretty strong in this position to kill a match off you remember the shriek of excitement it was from Jonas Suter Camino he did beat Michael Schneider 10-8 so tomorrow in the last 16 the young Spaniard will take on Matthias Snigotsky as SVB breaks off on the hill it's going to be dry it is dry he's left him straight in this is a chance still in this match I think Shevchik must forget the scoreline now. Much easier said than done, of course. And just concentrate on potting balls, trying to chip away. He can't think about the enormity of having to win five consecutive racks against Van Boning. Just winning one at a time. Slowly increasing the pressure. Over to table two, just in time to see Albin Auschen. He looks relieved already, getting over the line. In the all-Austrian battle, Albin Auschen, having been behind early, wins and comes good when it matters most. He defeats Max Lechner, he's good pal, 10-7, and now... Auschen in the last 16 tomorrow will play either Dennis Graber, the Estonian number one, or Niels Feyen, the multiple Moscone Cup MVP. Graber leading 4-2 there at the moment. And in a second or two, Shane Van Boning's lead here will be trimmed. Indeed it is to 9-6. That took a lot of heart because he must have been generally very disappointed and downcast. So he got the chance there, took it, and he's still in this batting. Yeah, 9-6. We've seen many a comeback. This match is not over.
other scores for you. Only two matches, by the way, now in the last 32 yet to begin. And they're going to be your next two streaming matches on tables one and two. Over on table two, Joshua Filler against Oscar Dominguez coming your way shortly. Next up after this, the closing match of the day will be Daniel Corrieri against Jason Shaw. What's Wojciech got on the break? Can he find the one ball in the side? Yes, he can. Where's the two ball going? Well, 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 well. There's a chance of a combo here, Phil. It is not easy, but it is there. If you want to say a few more wells, you're you know, quite okay to do so before he plays the next shot. Yeah, I get lost in the moment, Phil. And this is what he's weighing up. He's got to play it. It's as simple as that. He has no choice. And if he does get this, Phil, a quick rack like this, you know, he, I don't know, he just sends a little bit of a, a message. It really does. So it's the combo for a quick rack. SVB doesn't look best pleased. It's there. It is there. And yet again, the complexion of this match changes. A 2-9 combination off the break. And suddenly, Shane Van Boning, who led 9-5 and looked as though he got one foot and several toes in the last 16, now leads only 9-7. Game on. Yeah, he actually... The two ball actually flicked off the red three first. I don't believe he played this. Watch the two ball. Mieszka Fortunski, 7-3 up on Radislav Babica. Moritz Neuhausen, 3-2 up on Ronald Regley. A little bit of a comeback from Bessar Spahiu from Albania. Now 5-3 down against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Alex Kazakis and John Mora just about beginning. And Khalid Algamdi 2-1 up on Konrad Yuzhushin. Made the one ball again. Oh, look at this. He's going to have to get the jump cue out. He's no choice again. He's got to jump over the four and pop the two. Making sure with the jump cue that the, the tip is well and truly chalked. All of a sudden, this could go 9-8 in the blink of an eye. Jumping and putting the two is not the problem. It's getting on this three ball. Got to get on the three. He's on the three. He's on the three. That's okay. That is more than okay. And when you think about it, what has Shane Van Boning done 
to precipitate this comeback. He broke dry. That's all he did in rack 15. Yeah, something tells me with this break format, though, he will not be sat in his chair for the remainder of this match. The old break, the boring break, he might well have been. Swinging the cue ball round. Nicely done. Yes, the next match on the YouTube channel will be Joshua Filler against Oscar Dominguez. That's coming up soon. Needs an angle. Needs an angle. Yeah, I think the seven does put in the left centre. That's fine. It was 9-5, Shane broke dry, Wojciech cleared the table, 9-6, then he broke, first shot was a combo, 9-7, and then this is for another break and run for 9-8. Trailing 9-5, as Carl said. Wojciech Shevchik needed five racks in succession. <laughs> to record his fifth match win in succession in this tournament. Well, he's 60% of the way there. 9-8 now. And suddenly, the world champion is feeling the heat. Shevchik, so far in this tournament, well, he beat... Oi Chung Chan of the Netherlands, 9-0 first up. Then Robert Braga, 9-6 from Romania. What about these two wins? Next, 9-6 over Darren Appleton. 9-4 over the former World Masters champion, Karol Skowerski. So he's having a really good tournament. But of course, beating Van Boning, especially in these circumstances, that would top the lot. Can't tell you on table two. Filler and Dominguez officially underway. Where's the cue ball? He's made a ball. He has made a ball. A random ball. Cue ball was tracking towards the corner. Purple five ball. Looks like it's tied up with the green six. Shane will have nosed at that from his chair. He will know that. Potting this ball looks like the cue ball is going to come off the side rail towards the purple and green. First rack, Filler Dominguez. It looks like Filler's going to complete a very rapido break and run out. There it is. Yeah, 
of Joshua doing what Joshua does. Speed pool. SVB's back out of the chair. Unfortunately, he's kicking at the one. Ideally, he kicks two rails in behind the one, leaves the cue ball there, sends the one up table. Oh, what a shot from SVP. Absolutely delightful. Forget bank shots, forget jump shots. Shot of the day for me. Under pressure as well. Have to agree, Cole. What a kick and stick. That's how to swing a pendulum. Yeah, he can't really do a similar shot here because the seven ball is stopping that. And if he hits it on the right-hand side of that one, coming to rails, well, he's going to need a little bit of luck. This is awkward. Things can go wrong here, all because of that brown seven. He's a big favourite to hit the one. There's a lot of balls on the table, so good things can happen, I suppose. Oh, he's missed it. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that coming. He always does this, Shane Van Boning. When something like this happens, he's out of his chair like a rocket. He won't go about things like a rocket. He will not be rushed and do anything too hasty. But you can see the glint back in his eye. It's all about that five ball, isn't it? The purple five. He's trying to get rid of it now. I'm wondering if the five ball, excuse me, Wood pot into the bottom right corner. He's not had a look at that. Or maybe he has had a look at it. And maybe it doesn't pot. So he's trying to pot the five now. Yellow onto the green. Pot the purple. But you've got to try and set up a shot on the one ball. That's the. That's what he's looking at now. Well, he's actually looking at swinging. Yeah, I see what he's looking at. I wonder if that five ball goes across corner. That's what he's looking at now. If it does, he can pot the one and the two, pot the pink four in the top left and swing the cue ball round the table. That's what he's just weighing up. He's weighing up where he'd want the cue ball for that shot. Yeah, I don't think the five does come in this pocket, does it? So the combo it is. Where does the one finish and where does the cue ball? Where does the one ball and the cue ball finish? I don't think it's too good. The brown ball is in the white of the side pocket. But I tell you what, can he get the cue ball in behind the green six? and lock him up in jail. Yeah, it's a snug fit. I think he's going to leave the cue ball just where he's putting his cue. I don't think he can send the cue ball in behind the green six because he can't get the one 
in the right path. That's why he's played this shot. He's using the two ball. I don't think that's good, though. I don't think that's good enough. I'm not saying this is easy. Well, it's so tough to see from here, so we'll, we'll have to see. Phil is off to a flyer on the other table. He's about to go 2-0 up. Yeah, the cat has nine lives. Joshua Phil has already used up two here against Raphael Valen in the previous round earlier on today against Eklund Kachi. And with the oxygen, those two great escapes provided, I think he will be a real handful. Can he see enough to pop this one? I think it's close. Looks like he's playing it with left spin. Trying to turn the one over a little. No, he couldn't. He's had to play it full. And he's played safe. And it's a good safety. It's a very good safety. Van Boning down on his haunches, trying to see whether he can get through to a sliver of the one ball. At this stage, Carl, a millimetre could matter. It's clear, clearly very thin, this one. And he's just going to try and brush it over towards that green six. Cue ball off a couple of rails, back up the top end. Oh, it's another wonderful shot, Phil. It is another wonderful shot. He's coming with some big shots here. The way he locks people up, he could be one of those jailers in a, a classic Western. I must say, this match has been intriguing. I think every neutral would love it to go all the way. But Shane Van Boning and his army of fans, they don't want that at all. They want this wrapped up right here, right now. What about this shot he's looking at? He's playing it into the rail, soft draw, arc the cue ball, pop the one in the bottom left. Oh, my. This is a tougher shot, it's a tougher hit than going the other way, but he feels like this is more percentage in his favour. He'll go close to this, you know, he will go close. Gotta watch, he doesn't hit the six first, that's why Marcel Eckert, he's right there. Oh, he's fluked the six! No, I think it was six first, I really do. Let's have a look at this. No. Well, I'm glad you're not refing Phil Yates. No, at least I have the, the good grace to say I was incorrect in the first place. I did need the replay, though. Well, at least he hasn't landed straight in on this one. At least maybe if Wojciech plays safe, that fluke six 
he's not going to be the the shot that has cost Shane the match because that would have been cruel. It's been enthralling match this one, Phil. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, two truly superb matches on this main table today. Filler and Catchy got us off to a wonderful start and the pattern has continued here. As he left the gap, is there a gap between the two balls? It's close, you know. I think he has. Look at that, he has. He's left the gap. Unbelievable. John Virgo, the famed snooker commentator in the UK, always says there's always a gap. There isn't, but in this case, there is. It was an awkward safety. He would have known he couldn't get the one ball that safe. And this is a chance. Can Shane get on the two? I think he's better stunning this ball in and spinning the cue ball around the table. That's what he's playing now. The two goes in the top right and it goes in the same pocket. He's just potted this one ball in. That was a better choice of shot for me. Yeah, even though the cue ball's landed on the rail, he can just focus on the pot. He would have liked it off the rail though. Of course he would. Yeah, this is twitchy especially to these unforgiving centres. Oh, that could be the killer blow. Just needs to land on the left side of the potting angle on the seven. And I think he's done enough. The expression on his face tells us he might not be on the, the correct angle. Well, if he's landed straight, he'll either draw the cue ball back a wee bit and then cut the eight down the rail, or he will play a power draw shot. Well, he's landed super straight there, hasn't he? So... Yeah, he played a hard stun. Just got another cue ball out of it, didn't he? This is a thin one. He's still okay, don't get me wrong. Phil, the start of this rack. Let's cast our mind back. The kick and stick and then the wonderful safety shot. Simply amazing. Indeed, SVB is A-OK. -okay. 